Inshallah the holy month of Rabbil Awwal <coughs> we go to the app and open up under the months of Rabbil Awwal and under the understanding of the tajalli it's the third lunar month Rabbil Awwal and the power of nine and the reality of nine times the third month opens the secret of twenty-seven. Dhabi wal ishreen the secret between two and seven and what is this twenty-seven as a gate for all of our celebrations. This gate of twenty-seven is a gate towards paradise realities and Divinely realities. The twenty-seventh name of Allah al-Basir, the one whom sees and the opening of vision and spiritual vision that tajalli under this month. 27th name of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mudathir, the one whom shows patience against tyranny. That this is a sabr and patience is a key, The Sayyidina Mudathir is the key to al-Basir is to see because we talked his good, good character. It's not about arrogance, it's about having good character, be humble, be humble, whatever test and difficulty Allah sends. We try to keep ourselves to be humble, to be quiet and to exhibit the best of character. That character is the, is the khuluq of Sayyidina Muhammad like a key that opens up al-Basir, that he opens and puts into the heart an opening like a crack, crack, crack. The heart begins to open in its spiritual vision to see what Allah wants you to see from the gifts and the reality that have been bestowed upon the soul. The 27th surah is the guide for this dunya and for our spiritual reality and that's Surat Al-Nam, the ant. And within Surat Al-Nam has immense realities, the tajalli of this month, Subhana man huwa da'imu la yakhta. The one whom is perpetual and who never ends. We're entering into a cave of Divine lights, Divine grace that can't even be understood. These realities are beyond paradise realities. This is not for the inhabitants of paradise. The inhabitants of paradise are granted streams and rivers and flowers and trees like jangal, like a jungle. Somebody says, I want to give you a Divine immense reality of the Divinely face or you want to go into the garden? So what I want to go to garden for? I want to be in the Divinely face of Allah's reflection and that only Allah came to teach us is the face of Sayyidina Muhammad So then these realities and these haqqaiqs they're teaching are of an immense, immense reality. So as the guide for our journey into this reality is guidance from Holy Qur'an. So just three, we'll start with three verses Shaykh of Surat Al-Nam, first three verses. Surah 27, Surat Al-Nam, the first three verses. <coughs> A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Taansin Tilka Qur'ani wa kitabim mubeen Hudan wa bushara lil mu'mineen Alladheena yuqimuna salata wa yu'tuna zakata wa hum bil akhirati hum yu'qinun 
Sadaqallahul Aliyyul Azim. Sadaqallahul Azim, I love the Rasul Kareem that entering into this cave and its reality into the inner core of this cave and this holy surah also has the incident of Sayyidina Musa salam. And Sayyidina Musa represents this divine power and haybah and that going into the Divine the Presence he sees and is called by a fire. He sees a fire at a distance to go to that reality. That fire is the reflection on dunya but the Muhammadiyoon Allah is taking their souls to the reality of that fire and that's the reality of Ta-seen, the Tahir seen. This ta is from the realities of Sayyidina Taha in which Allah from that toyn or ta is the immense purity of a fire that can't be understood. Something so pure, so immensely purified nothing can contain it, nothing can understand it, nothing comes near or like it that Allah created from the fire of fires, the essences of essences, this ta that represents the purity of the reality of who Sayyidina Muhammad The taha is the messenger of Allah because the ha is the hadi. So taha, Sayyidina taha is tahir al-hadi. The purified guide that Allah was a hidden treasure wanting to be known. So the ta represents the symbol of purity, tahir. That with what purity Allah when you want something pure you put it in a fire, a fire that's so pure that it brings out a light upon light. Because here we don't understand light. So they say, look to the sun, see that's just a fire, an immense fire. So we have a, something we call light here but we don't understand its reality. The nar and the diya is the light. The nur is merely the reflection that you think you understood. So Allah is just saying, I'm not taking you to the reflection, I'm taking you into the core of where this energy is emanating, what this reality is emanating. With this ta of immense purity I brought this reality together and with the ha of the ta-ha of hidayat and guidance. With that I made the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah because I am a hidden treasure wanting to be known and nothing can make me to be known except this reality of Sayyidina Muhammad This is the, the guidance into that cave. So then when Allah is, is teaching for us this Surat Al-Nam that coming, that tie is from that reality of fire, that reality of an immensely purified fire in which Allah describes His Divinely Presence to Sayyidina Musa, you have entered into the presence of Allah That seen, ta seen is the secret, nurul anwar wa sirat al asrar. From this secret every light is emanating and every light is related to that secret. Means the breaking down the reality of entering into that cave that Allah says, it's not just anywhere you're going. It's so purified by its ta and that it carries the secret of everything manifesting. Everything you look at is a manifestation, it's a secret from a light. Means the light of every secret and the secret of every light means of everything that's appearing. Everything that appearing is a reality from Muhammadun Rasulullah everything. That again when you ponder through your tafakkur and contemplation can't be understood. Imagine a source of light that everything 
is manifesting from it. Everything from universes, galaxies to planets to the trees to the ants on the earth, they're manifesting from this light from the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that's why Allah put the scene in there because it has all my knowledges and reality of ilmu yaqeen. It has all my realities of ayna yaqeen. Everything that has to do with an ancient ilm and ancient knowledge and ancient understanding and vision of a reality and haqqaiqs and as a result Allah put within it all haqq yaqeen. So it has ilmu yaqeen in the scene, ayna yaqeen, every vision of truth what we see with these eyes is not the truth. This, uh, this world is but an illusion Allah When Allah talking about Ayn al-Yaqeen, say, no I'm seeing what it is, what's so special about Ayn al-Yaqeen? No it's not what you see, we don't see anything from this world. These eyes, are, uh, these eyes of ours are just a complete illusion of what Allah created, with what colors Allah created everything, with what emanation everything is emanating, how many dimensions Allah created, how many dimensions are you in existence at, at this very moment? And that your soul traverses all of them, the immensity of this creation that can be understood. Mm -hmm. And Allah said, I'm going to take you into the source of this Muhammadan fire and flame that He carries the secret of everything that's going to manifest. And once you saw it manifest, its secret is with Muhammadun Rasulullah This is Ulum al Awwaleen wa Akhireen. And this why Allah is the one whom taught this reality. When we say, Ummi, it's not that unlettered but no one dare to teach this fire anything. No one had the reality, the cleanliness, nothing of a station to teach the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why Allah says, Ummi. Not to degrade people and they come and they say, no it's not lettered, no what are you talking about? He owns letters <laughs> owns all knowledges and all manifestations from that reality but no one dared to be the one to teach that reality but taught directly by Allah But shadeed al quwwah one whom taught by immense power. That Allah describes His own power, this is, He's taught by one whom is immense in power. That's the scene that Allah describing attached to this fire, I've given every knowledges of yaqeen of realities. Every vision of reality means that witnessing everything in its true reality, in its true nature, that is the vision of Sayyidina Muhammad not the vision of the physical world that is under illusion and delusion and somebody fool you with what this is and what that is. Now Allah clarifying, no, no this is the vision of haqq in which the reality and the essence of it is known. And then haqq yaqeen that every truth is, is emanating from this fire. And that's when Allah describes in Holy Qur'an, we created creation in truth. So be what truth? The, the verbal truth? No, we created this truth in this purified fire. What's emanating from the reality of Prophet of its knowledges, its real identity and its haqqaiq, Allah describing then this is it. When we describe we created creation and truth, this is that reality. And that's the guidance that Allah is directing us that when entering into this cave, ta seen. Tilka ayat al Qur'an wal kitab al mubeen. Sayyidina ta seen, this cave, tilka ayat al Qur'an. Ayat min ayatullah. Surah means face, what? Surah means face. People say, no it means chapter, so you can say what you want. But Allah said face, ayah is a direction towards that. Every surah of Qur'an is a face, 
Aya is assigned to that face. Tilka ayatul Qur'an. You're entering now where my, my Qur'an is emanating from this fire. This fire that making this power of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to come out, tilka ayatul Qur'an. And wa kitab al mubin We said before Prophet is, is the kitab of Allah There's no book up there. Prophet is the book of Allah Tilka ayah, this fire you're seeing is my Divinely speech that's not created. Quran is not created. It's Allah's Divinely qudra and power emanating. So Allah in establishing tilka ayat al-Qur'an. These are the signs of Qur'an, this power, this flame, this reality that your soul is entering in. Wal kitab al mubin is the reality of Muhammad and Rasulullah because Muhammad and Rasulullah is the kitab that holds the reality of the Qur'an that emanating from manzil Qur'an is emanating from the Divinely heart of Prophet So distinguishes one is the kitab of Allah is this walking light that everything is emanating from and the reality of the Qur'an is His power. So it means that Allah's speech emanating from the reality of that soul and as a result Allah is guiding everything. So when they say, oh what are you guys, what are you mixing up? No, this is real tawheed, real La ilaha illallah and then Kitab al-Mubin Muhammadun Rasulullah. So the Kitab is there and Qur'an is emanating as a power out and that's the the reality of this cave that Allah taking us into that reality and only Allah taking us into that reality to be dressed and blessed by it. And then Allah clarifying this gift and these lights and these blessings, this is a hudan wal bushra lil mu'mineen, it's a guidance and glad tidings for believers. So it means the immensity of this light is the light of our guidance, is the light of our reality. That's when we're saying the guide, the Qur'an, the Qur'an Holy Qur'an is guiding this creation and they're describing how it's guiding. That that light that emanating is emanating throughout creation, wakulul amr, every command is coming because this is the Muhammadan heart where in the next month Allah will be taking us onto the journey of Yaseen. What? Qur'an and Hakim. But before Yaseen we're in Tahseen, in the emanation of its fire. That Allah describing that in this fire of purified light that's so pure nothing can be understood from it and is the source of everything. Every angel will be created from this, every bayt al-Mahmur will be created, every paradise will be created, every planet will be created. Allah mixes it with a secret and brings it into existence. But because Allah has no direction, Allah has no shaykh and no form. But Allah guiding us into the Muhammadan heart where my power is in that, my power is in that flame. That's the essence and the reality. Then later in this surah Allah would describe for us that Sayyidina Musa salam then talks of its manifestation. It call a Musa, say read verse 7, mention when Musa salam said to his family, indeed I have perceived the fire and I will bring it to you from their information. I will bring… Oh, Sayyidina Musa is seeing a fire. So it's not a regular fire because he saw a fire is burning bush. No, this is that heart. He saw its reflection onto earth like a portal that he was to enter into that reality. Where only Allah are taking our souls in that reality to its reality, not from the earth portal. 
that Sayyidina Musa is saying but from the haqqaiq of the soul. The Prophet is drawing back these souls into that ocean and Sayyidina Musa is, is then is exhibiting that station on earth that when he saw that portal, he saw that reality then Allah is describing. Mention when Musa said to his family, indeed I have perceived a fire, naran, and I will bring to you from their information. Why? Because tasin, it's the source of all uloom, all knowledges, of every reality. Recite the, the Arabic one, Shaykh Shahid 7. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ith Qala Musa li ahlihi inni anastu narab Sa'atikum min ha bi khabarin au atikum bi shihabin qabasin la'alaykum tastarun Sadaqallahul Aliyyul Azeem Baraka Rasulul Kareem That's Hudan or Bushra. He saw a fire to get information, get guidance. Means this lights and this is Divinely guidance, shihaban that it will give you glad tidings and guidance and reach to these realities. The immensity of what Sayyidina Musa is describing that Allah saw is that I saw a fire and it's going to give me information, that's why we're describing this tasin. When the soul is entering into that, that flame is jumping onto that soul. You can't enter into a fire and not be burned by it. It will put its fire into you. And that's why Allah is describing hudan, you'll be guided. How by going into this reality would you be guided? Because that flame begins to dress upon the heart and the soul of that soul that entering into that flame. Like a moisture the flame enter in. So that's why the turuq is teaching the body that instead of letting your body run and exhibit every type of satanic character, every bad type of character. Because the body is running on the outside and they're taking the soul into this flame and as a result of entering into this flame its powers becoming and the light becoming immense. That light when it comes it agitates the physical body and all the shaitans that attach to your physical being. That's why the presence of shaykhs agitate devils. They don't make them happy, they're not attracted to them, they agitate. Because the fire and the flame burns that. So there's two of your beings, one is your soul that going with them into the flame and Allah is describing hudan, it's going to be a guidance. That when Sayyidina Musa is saying, I'm seeing the flame and I'm going to go get some information. I'm going to get knowledges and realities to be dressed. This Muhammadan heart to dress us and to bless us. And then a protection for us because of that light and that dressing and that blessing and the immensity of that light how it protects the believer from every difficulty. Because when Allah wants to guide who can stop Allah's guidance and there is no guidance except by Allah's grant of guidance. So when they describe this their understanding should be your need for madad, your need for a guide. This is not something you get by fasting Ramadan. Say, I fasted Ramadan, I went for Jummah. Good for you, but you're not going to get this reality. These realities are not for common 
not for understanding on the mullahs of justice whom we granted the light, we granted the light and if we didn't grant the light they have no way to that light. So it's not an amusement park, open for everyone. This is a, a symbol of these knowledges and this reality is for us an understanding of the immensity of the ni'mat and the gift from Allah that you have been granted guidance. And that these guides then teaching this reality, they are taking your soul into that reality. For whatever they say it's a truth upon your soul. And it's not common understanding and it's not known this is a gift by Allah that I'm going to this flame and I'm going to get information and realities from it and it becomes a source of protection for me. It becomes a source of blessings and immense, immense gifts from Divinely Presence and all I need to achieve it is to control the horse, control the wild animal, the beast, the ego. And that's why the month before we talked about Good Lord how manifestation is manifesting. You can see then how the two teams are playing. Those whom sent by Prophet is to destroy your nafs, put you under difficulty and hardship, test your nafs. Of course they're not going to call you if you think you deserve to be called. Bother you, agitate you, why? To bring down your demon that seems to be getting too strong. And as a result they're guiding you into the heart of all realities, the, the heart in which manzir Qur'an and every reality coming of an eternal dress that can be understood. What type of dressing is that? And the manifestations that Prophet described that you have a companion, everyone will have a companion in their grave. Who will be your companion? If your deeds are good it takes the image of a beautific angel looking like yourself and you're astonished by its beauty and many awliyaullah because of their khalwa have seen all of these. So when they say, oh this hadith is like this daif, this hadith is hasan, they've seen it from the heart of Prophet This ghaib is not ghaib for them, they know this world like they know the back of their hand because they've been in seclusions. Where they saw the badness of their character and it manifested. As soon as their seclusions begin Allah lift the veil and every anger will come to you in your grave like a vicious dog, vicious dog that just comes after you and you can't stop it and they teach you be patient, make your zikr, take your tafakkur and, and make your connection. Why? Because that connection with your shaykh, that connection in your qabr, that connection with the Muhammadan light comes to you. But you have to have istiqam and firmness because you're frightened in your khalwa, you're frightened from what you're seeing. These things are attacking you to move, to run and then ravage you. And you sit under the attack and you feel what Allah wants you to feel from its biting and from its attack and you make your tafakkur, make your meditation, make your connection, make your zikr so that the light of the shaykh can push that away. So no teaching of philosophy, they lived by it. And as a result they came out certified by it. And then when they saw the evilness and the badness and all the bad characteristics they understood these hadiths. Later came for them the understanding of the hadiths, they first witnessed it, they attained a rahmah. Then Allah is teaching them that that what you witnessed of your bad character, this is Ayatul Qur'an. Ali Imran verse 30 when Allah said they are going to witness their deeds, they witness the goodness of their deeds and then poor people whom will witness the evilness of their actions. They witness it, it will appear to them and they'll wish that every evil action was very distant from them because of a proximity and how it begins to torment them. So that means then all of that manifestation teaching was for this reality opening in this month. The shaitan is hard at work to manifest the worst characteristics and that those manifestations come back to 
destroy the believer in dunya, take away their faith, take away their dignity, take away the honour that Allah has given to insan. So that why? So that in the grave they have a horrific experience. We're telling the gentleman there was a singer, Spanish American who was singing, died and they said that the family who were very religious people kept having visions of the daughter who was a singer telling them, begging them, stop my songs, stop my records from playing. Every time it plays I'm punished in my grave. You think the bad actions that you do and the people that are doing today and the songs they make and this is a da'wah, this is an information, this is an influence upon people to enter hell. You think every time they play that song that person not being tormented in the grave? 5,000 more people just heard your song again, angels come in again with their azab. And Allah is, is warning us that, be warned all your actions manifest. And those whom took a life of, of tafakkur for what? Is that they can witness. When they're extremely angry they begin to witness, if Allah opens sincerity for them they witness the bad character, they witness the, the bad energy that coming. And they can be warned from it and understand from it and to abstain from it, make their istighfar and to begin to diffuse of it. We have seen in our life people's bad characters manifest as creatures. Certain people you go around and all of a sudden wasps were coming out of the walls from everywhere because that person's character is like a wasp. They're so distinct in their bad character it manifests and you would see all these creatures start to manifest. This is not something spooky stuff, this is real stuff. So then when we manifest good now imagine then what's manifesting. All these practices, all this zikr, all this one whom is able to step upon themselves their angelic reality in which Prophet described is so beautific. A face that comes to them like the shining sun because this is all the teachings. Your soul will shine brighter than the sun that we see on this earth. And the servant will be astonished at, who are you? So I'm your good deeds. You're my good deeds, they're astonished. And the sun is what doing to them? Must be dressing them, blessing them with immense lights and many other teachings. When the servant enters the grave they see a very beautific image come to them, say, who are you? Say, I am the Qur'an. Qur'an? Yeah. The Qur'an that you read? I am that Qur'an that you read, I'm here to defend you against any difficulty that you may have brought into this grave with you. Then they come and they say, who are you? See another beautiful creature says, I am the Ramadan, the angel of Ramadan. So what, what are you doing? So I am the manifestation of the days that you fasted, the days that you were thirsty, the days that you You went through difficulty, I am here now to dress you from it. These actions are not empty actions. Allah because we are a creature, we're creation, He'll make all of it to manifest. Lucky are those whom their actions are good, they did their madads, they understood the support, they understood the need to be around. Ibadullah salihin, nabiyeen, siddiqeen, shuhadahi wa salihin so that they have them in the grave. They understood their madad when they went into seclusion and became overbearing. And they asked for madad, and they asked for support immediately the shaykhs were present with them and taught them and gave zikrs to them and made difficulties to push away from them. And then took them to levels in which to be purified and to be cleaned and to brought down all their bad angers. Don't bring a dog, don't bring a bad air energy and a bad character to be with you as your best friend and to make your character filled with rats and rodents and, and roaches. And Allah said, then be careful of that because Allah loves your creation, don't do that. 
but have good actions and good amal and du'as and all of the good characteristics so that the believer sees these beatific images, beatific angels coming saying, I'm your Ramadan, I am all your fasting that Allah is making me to manifest like this and to dress you and bless you from all its secrets. Not only keep punishment, the servants may not need that much punishment. These angels and realities coming to the grave to dress them. These are what you've been put aside, Allah put aside in your account all of His dressings, all of His secrets, all of its beautific realities so that you can be presented to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad in your full honour and dignity. Not in a state of difficulty but they want to dress you and bless you in your grave with all your lights and all your medallions of what you achieved and struggled for in dunya. That's what the dress of that blessing and then to be presented to the Holy Presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Because Allah want ashiqeen to be beatific in the presentation to the presence of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad doesn't want dirty and bad and, and something to be under difficulty to be presented to that reality. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us, give us good actions, Ameen. give us good characteristics. Ameen. That would be grand for us in these next 12 days to reach to these lights and reach to these blessings Ameen. and that grant us from the light and the heart and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. <laughs> Wa hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.